welcome to Scorecard Studio. I'm Catherine and I'll be taking you through step by step how to paint this lovely pansy. If you're painting along as a total beginner, you might want to watch a couple of my other tutorials in the Watercolour for Beginners collection. They will take you through what materials you need to start and how to practice some key techniques. We're going to predominantly use the wet in wet technique to paint this pansy, so don't worry if the end result isn't how you want it to look. We are focusing on enjoying using the watercolour paint and learning how to master it. So make sure you're all set up. You need your paints, palettes, brushes, two jars of water, pencil, eraser, masking tape and your watercolour paper. So let's begin. I picked this pansy from my garden and took a close-up photo for reference. I'll make the photo available for you to download. Start by using the masking tape to mask a square on the page. This is so we have a section at the side to test our colours on. Next, sketch the flower's outline and sections. I'm following my reference photo which is to the side of the screen. Remember this doesn't need to be perfect. The pansy is made of four petals, so start in the middle of the square and draw each petal. Don't press too hard with the pencil. You can see I'm holding the pencil loosely and barely applying pressure. The pansy is a delicate flower and we don't want to see harsh pencil lines through our paint. Once you're happy with your sketch, take your eraser and lightly go over the pencil lines. You need to leave a faint line. You can see how light mine is. It's just so we have a guide that won't show through our painting. Now we need to mix some colours. It's always good to experiment with what colours you're going to use before you start your painting. You might have a different paint set to me, so just experiment with what you've got. I'm going to mix the purple colour of the pansy using Alizarin Crimson and Ultramarine Blue. You can see I've made two mixes, one with more crimson and one with more blue. After testing them on the page, I've decided that the mix with more blue is the best colour match. It's helpful to write down the colour and what the mixes are next to your testers for when you look back on this painting in the future. There is a small yellow part in the middle of the flower. I'm going to make this the starting point. I've mixed a small amount of gamboge hue, which is a lovely bright yellow, and a small amount of sap green. Start with the wet in wet technique. I'm using a small round brush. Apply clean water to the middle part of the flower where the yellow green part is. Be careful not to go over onto the petals. Once the paper in that area has a nice sheen, take some of the green and drop it onto the upper part of the wet area. Then do the same with the yellow on the lower part. The colours should blend softly in the middle. Let this dry completely before we go any further. You could wait for it to dry naturally or help it along with a hairdryer on a cool, low setting. Now let's start on one of the petals. Use a large brush to apply clean water and take the water up to the edges of the petal shape. Make sure you don't have any puddles and once your section has a nice sheen, take a smaller brush and start to apply the purple colour we mixed earlier. Remember, it's usually best to work from light to dark with watercolour, so don't go too heavy with the paint at the beginning because we can always layer more paint on afterwards. Put the purple paint onto the petal, starting from the middle and forming a loose triangle shape as you move towards the outer petal. The outer part of the petal is white, so be careful not to put too much purple down so that it takes over the whole area. This dark purple area on the petal has an irregular edge and the wet in wet technique is brilliant for recreating that. You can see the paint forming that edge as it blends with the water on the page. Now start to add a little bit more paint to create those darker branches. Okay, let's stop there. We don't want to overwork it. 
Whilst the outer area is still wet, we need to add some very light shadow to the edge of the petal to give the impression of its frilly edge. Take some of your purple mixture and put it into another well. I've added Payne's Grey to it to make it a little bit different from the petal colouring. You need less water with this mixture and this will give us a little bit more control over where it goes. Very lightly and in small strokes add this to the edge of the petal. Because the paper is still wet in this area it will blend out nicely and create the soft shadows that we're looking for. And once that's done that's the first layer on that petal complete. Now you need to repeat that process and complete the bottom and the left petal. Now we can start on the top petal. You can see that the colour marking is opposite to the other petals. So using the same process as before, only this time we're going to concentrate the dark purple colour on the edge and keep the middle area white. Once the whole flower has its first layer of watercolour, it's time to let it dry completely before we move on. So at this point, you can bring in the hairdryer again or walk away for a bit, make yourself a cuppa and come back after a short break. So our pansy is starting to look good, but it needs a little bit more definition and deeper purple colour. So we're gonna use the wet and wet technique again Take a clean brush and put clean water onto the first petal. You need to put less water on than before and only from the middle of the flower to about halfway down the purple area which we've already created. Be careful not to do too many strokes or you'll start to lift the paint underneath. Load your brush with the purple paint mix and apply it to the petal starting from the middle of the flower like we did before. This time round you can put a lot more paint on to get that lovely dark rich colour. Draw some of it down the petal to create those branches that we can see. Focus this layer of paint in the middle of the flower because we want to preserve the beautiful layer we made earlier on the outer petal. Using a small brush we're going to use the wet paint on the dry paper to add some of the little flecks that you can see around the edge of that purple part. This doesn't have to be perfect just try and make your flex irregular and not all going in the same direction. So you need to carry on and do this as we did before for each of the other petals.
So we're going to stop there and then we're going to let this dry completely. Erase any pencil lines that are still showing uh, and carefully remove the masking tape and then sign it. And there we've completed our pansy in watercolour. I really hope you enjoyed painting this pansy in watercolour and getting to grips with the wet and wet technique. Let me know how you did, drop a comment below or send me a picture on social media by tagging Scorecard. I'd love to see your paintings. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my latest tutorials. Thanks and I'll see you for the next one.